Okay, here is the lecture uh, for Sissonville High School, uh, Chapter 12 on Treatment. Uh, we talked about the mental health disorders in class, and this is actually a chapter I mentioned today that I wanted you guys to read. Um, we were going to cover this in class, but given our the way the schedule is working out at the end, we're not going to get to do this in class, so we're going to do it like this. Um, what I'm going to do on these slides, I'm going to give you the main term or concept, and I'm going to discuss discuss what they mean or give you some kind of a definition, probably more of a discussion. So you'll definitely want to write down uh, what I'm saying, and I'll give you some more specific guidance here as we go. But I'm going to start talking about the different types of therapy. We talked early in the semester about um, therapy being used as a tool by mental health professionals to help people feel and function better. There are different types of therapies that we use in, in psychology. Um, we're not saying that one is any better or worse than any other. They're just different ways of trying to help people feel and function better. And the first type of therapies that I want to talk to you about, I'm adjusting my camera a little bit just to make sure that I've got what I need here. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. Are called insight-oriented therapies. When you gain insight, that means you... You realize something. You come to an understanding, if you will. Remember we talked about Sigmund Freud early in the semester. Uh, Insight-oriented approaches come largely from the work of, of Sigmund Freud. And remember, we talked about the id, the ego, and the superego and his theory of personality. We're not going to get into all that again here, but that just hopefully that will jog your memory a little bit. Uh, psychoanalysis and psychodynamic therapy. A lot of times people, when they think of therapy, they have this image of someone sitting on a couch with a clipboard or a pen and pencil with someone lying on a couch talking about their problems. Um, like I've said before in class, part of doing therapy involves me sitting at a desk or sitting in a chair and listening to someone discuss problems. And there is some writing involved, uh, certainly, as I'm taking notes and documenting what's being said. But there's also a lot more to therapy than just what this picture in the cartoon, if you can read that below. The dog is lying in the chair, or rather on the couch, saying, Therapy isn't easy for me. To begin with, I shouldn't be up on the couch. Which is kind of supposed to be funny. But let's start with psychoanalysis. Now, these terms are discussed in your textbook as well. Psychoanalysis is an intensive, and you want to write this down, is an intensive form of therapy that is directly connected to Freud's theory of personality and also based on the idea that psychological difficulties are caused by unconscious conflicts and the unconscious that word unconscious is key there uh, we talked about unconscious meaning that you're not aware of something or to be unaware of so again I'll repeat that one more time psychoanalysis is an intensive form of therapy that is directly connected to Freud's theory of personality, and it's based on the idea that psychological problems or difficulties are caused by unconscious conflicts. Now, psychodynamic therapy is a little less intensive, uh, rather intense than this. Um, your book gives you a short definition of this. Basically, psychodynamic therapy is a less intensive form of psychoanalysis, and we'll kind of talk more about uh, what that really means here in just a few minutes. So, next slide here. What are some techniques and issues associated with psychoanalysis and psychodynamic therapies? Well, the first idea that I want to talk to you about is something called free association. Uh, this is a technique, and you'll want to have this in your notes. This is a technique used in psychoanalysis and in psychodynamic therapies where the patient basically just says whatever comes to his or her mind. And the train of thoughts will reveal to the therapist or the psychoanalyst what the patient's issues are and hopefully ways of handling them. So if I ask you to free associate, I would say, okay, you know, tell me, tell me the first thing that comes into your mind or just run off things. Just tell me what you're thinking about. Just run them off. And I might, you know, you might hear something like uh, bananas, baseball, car, difficulties, I don't know, and you just run through whatever's on your mind, and supposedly the stuff that's buried in your unconscious will start to come out and form some kind of a train of thought that will reveal to the therapist an underlying problem. Okay, that's, that's free association. Another technique associated with um, psychoanalysis and psychodynamic therapy is dream analysis. 
Um, it would have been fun to talk about this more in class, um, but this is something. This is something else here. Um, dream analysis is a technique used in psychoanalysis and psychodynamic therapy, where the therapist examines the content of dreams to gain access into the unconscious. Um, there's a lot of different ideas about why we dream. Um, some some professionals, some psychologists, mental health people feel that dreams are just random. They just kind of happen. They don't really mean that much. Other psychologists, mental health professionals feel that dreaming is an extension of our thinking or our thought processes uh, as, we, as we go to sleep, maybe finishing off the day. Others would contend that dreams kind of can tap into our unconscious, maybe bring things out that we really aren't aware of. Another technique used with psychoanalysis and psychodynamic therapies is interpretation. Interpretation is a technique used in psychodynamic therapies where the therapist deciphers the patient's words and behaviors, assigning unconscious motivations to them. So, again, inter I mean, interpretation is very subjective. Like, I've got the, the ink blot right here that I'm, that I'm pointing to. I could ask you, what does that look like? What is that to you? Um, you may interpret that a lot of different ways. Some people may say, well, it looks like a moth or some kind of a bug or insect. Uh, I heard, I've heard some people say that that looks like bone structure, like the pelvis area. Some people might say it looks like a mask, like a party mask. I don't know. So I guess it depends on your interpretation. But assigning unconscious motivations to these. Uh, a couple of other issues that are related, not just to psychoanalysis or psychodynamic therapy, but really you can get this in any kind of a therapy situation. The first one I want to talk about is resistance. Um, how many of you have ever have ever refused to cooperate with someone? Probably all of you. I am no different. I'm very stubborn, and I've, I have I have resisted people at various times in my life. Uh, resistance is just kind of what it sounds like. Um, resistance is a reluctance or a refusal to cooperate with the therapist. It can be an unconscious phenomenon. In other words, sometimes patients want to deal with their problems in therapy, but they don't. And they're not even aware of the fact that they're resisting. So again, it can be an unconscious process. Um, it could be, or it could be just uh, an outright refusal, a conscious awareness. Just you know, a therapist may ask me, Brandon, I need you to talk about your family situation, talk to me about your mother, and I may say, No, I'm not going to do it. Forget it. So that's just outright refusal. So resistance can take either of those forms. And it can be an issue, but it's one that we anticipate. Because when people are talking about their problems, a lot of times it's, it's going to be natural to resist talking about or dealing with those problems. So it's not something that, that we're surprised with as therapists. Uh, transference is another big one. Um, this is another big issue, not just in psychodynamic or therapies or in psychoanalysis, but really, really in any kind of therapy situation. Transference is is the process where patients relate to their therapist as they did to some other person in their life. Um, and I like this, this image that I have here. I don't know if you can read it or not. It looks kind of small on the video camera that I'm using here. But the image here on the left says, Someone wearing a hat is kind to you. Right there. Right here, it says, This makes you feel positive. Over here, you treat another person kindly because they're also wearing a hat. It's not because they're really nice to you, but it's because they look like or remind you of the person who was kind to you. That's transference. So taking that over into a, a more of a real-life therapy situation, here's a, an issue that I encountered as a therapist. I was doing therapy with, with a woman. She was an inmate at one of our prisons some years ago, and I could get no rapport with her. She didn't like me. She wouldn't talk to me. None, none of the tricks that I had in my bag were working. I could not establish any kind of a professional connection or any kind of rapport with her. So finally, after you know, really trying for many sessions, she finally said, yeah, you remind me a lot of my dad. And it just so happens she hated her dad's guts. So it's like, ah, so then it made sense to me. That's classic transference. I reminded her for whatever reason of her dad, and she hated her dad, therefore she hated me because I reminded her of him. And that's something that, that happens 
uh, with some frequency. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call that the end of the first part of the lecture uh, for treatment. Thanks.